So in this video, we're going to continue our discussion about ATCAs, uh, our first topic for exam four, uh, and looking specifically at uh, the binding sites um, for these allosteric effectors. And we're going to put that into relationship of the concept mapped. And uh, this time I'm going to draw the RT equilibrium in this direction. And we know that uh, the regulatory subunits are what make the enzyme special. Because if we isolate just the catalytic trimer so that we, we don't have a, a holo enzyme, then we are we, we're just talking about the R form of the enzyme. So the R form of the enzyme, you can associate that with just the isolated catalytic trimers, which are possible to isolate in the laboratory. The tense form is, uh, is favored when you have the regulatory subunits and you've assembled this uh, C6R6 holo enzyme. Until you start adding substrate. The substrate binding, so binding of aspartate, will begin to uh, nudge this equilibrium towards the, the R form. And that structure, the R form, encourages binding of more aspartate. So this is a cooperative uh, type of uh, interaction. At some tipping point, uh, enough of these uh, binding sites on the catalytic subunits. So aspartate, the substrate, is binding. Uh, there's three substrate binding sites found at the interface between the catalytic subunits. And because there's two such catalytic trimers, there's a total of six aspartate binding sites, all associated with uh, binding these catalytic subunits. So once you've bound a few of these sites, now uh, the system switches over to the R form, and now it's relatively easy to bind the, the remaining, uh, to occupy the remaining sites with aspartate, the substrate. Now for the nucleotides, the tense form is stabilized by binding the nucleotide CTP. And the tense uh, structure, this closed form of the holo enzyme, encourages the binding of additional CTP units. And those are binding at the regulatory subunits. So CT binds, there's a CTP binding site at each of these R subunits. We can draw that in here. So CTP is occupying some binding site on the regulatory subunits. And there, there's a total of six CTP binding sites. And the binding of the nucleotide ATP will favor uh, so ATP will favor the R form of the holo enzyme. And, uh, and additionally, it also competes with a binding of CTP. So ATP, once it's there in the regulatory subunit, it blocks, if it gets there first, it blocks the binding of the CTP units. So you can overcome allosteric negative regulation, this feedback inhibition by CTP by having uh, ample ATP and by having a, a lot of substrate. And uh, the, the, whole, the whole system acquires these intricate uh, sort of intelligent properties able to, send, to sense and respond to the levels of multiple molecules, aspartate, ATP, and CTP as a consequence of these regulatory subunits. Uh, we, can, we can draw what the, the rate as a function of aspartate uh, concentration curve would look like for just the C3 units, and the, it looks just like a michaelis menten enzyme. And this is, uh, uh, characterizes the R form of the enzyme. There's another, if we could freeze the enzyme in the T form, it would have a much more difficult time binding aspartate. Uh, this is the T, but we cannot isolate that in the lab, so uh, it's just a hypothetical curve. And then the, the ultimate S-shaped curve 
we arrive at that by thinking about at some point we tip the balance between R and T forms to favor the R form and we get this, uh, this S-shaped sigmoidal curve.